It's Wednesday, May 12th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And in an amazing mid-air collision today at Centennial Air Park near Denver, Colorado, left two aircraft severely damaged, probably totaled, and no injuries, which is very, very rare in a mid-air collision. Here's what we know so far. This comes from Channel 7 News in Denver, Colorado. There were no injuries reported after two airplanes collided mid-air over Cherry Creek State Park, leading one of them to crash in a field and another to land safely at a nearby airport, that's Centennial Airport, officials said Wednesday. The crash was reported around 10.25 a.m. By the way, the weather looks beautiful, clear in a million. Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office spokesperson Deputy John Bartman said that the crash involved a single-engine Cirrus SR-22 carrying two people and a cargo Metroliner jet carrying just one pilot. It's unclear which plane caused the crash, but the NTSB is investigating. And we've got, thanks to Vice Aviation now, we already have the audio tapes and the radar track of this accident. The Federal Aviation Administration is also at the scene of the crash and will handle the investigation through the, along with the NTSB. The NTSB tweeted the, that the initial reports indicate the crash happened as the planes were landing. And the tweet from the NTSB says that they're investigating a May 12, 2021 mid-air collision involving a Metro Liner and a Cirrus near Denver, Colorado. No injuries reported in connection with the collision. Initial reports indicate the collision happened as the aircraft were landing and the NTSB is traveling to the scene. Bartman said that the Metro Liner jet landed at Centennial Airport without issues or injuries to the pilot. The Metro Liner jet is a Swergen SA-226TC Metro 3, better known as the flying sewer pipe in the industry, according to FAA spokesman Alan Kandeser. Key Lime Air, that's the owner-operator of the Metro Liner, said in a statement that they operate the Metro Liner airplane and the uh, company said that the plane was struck by another aircraft. The company, that would be the Cirrus. The company said that the plane sustained substantial damage to its empennage and <laughs> as, you, as you've seen the pictures are just amazing that he was able to land this thing at all. It su sustained substantial damage to its empennage and tail section but said the pilot was able to land it safely. Good job to the pilot of the Metro Liner. Just kept his cool about him. To him, it appeared to be a right engine failure. Of course, when you're up there in the pilot seat, you can't really see all of what's going on behind you. So I'm sure it was a shock to him when he landed to see the amount of damage to his Metro Liner. We are participating in an active investigation of the incident with the FAA and, and NTSB. As information comes to light, authorities deem it appropriate to share with the public. Uh, we will do so, the company said. We can express the gratitude we have company-wide that no one was injured. The Cirrus SR-22 plane registered to BBCO LLC out of Parker, Colorado, deployed a parachute and crashed in a field in Cherry Creek State Park. This crash occurred, or this collision occurred on final for the runway 17, the parallel runways at uh, Centennial Airport. We'll show you here on the chart. The two occupants walked away from the crash without injuries, Bartman said. Debris from the crash was spread across Bellevue Avenue into the park, and he said the plane was significantly damaged. And Bartman said the scene would likely be active for several hours while the investigation continues. Let's go inside and take a look at the radar tapes of this and show you just how this played out. And shows again the importance of 
Well, the limitations of see and avoid mid-air collision avoidance and how you need to back yourself up when doing parallel approaches to parallel runways. In the airline industry, we do this all the time. We shoot parallel approaches to parallel runways and the aircraft are stacked up such that they they will often come together like this, head to head, and then merge such that they are slightly staggered on the final approach. And neither aircraft shall pass the other aircraft while on one of these parallel approaches. But in the airline industry, in order to do this safely, even though we are flying visual approaches to a visual approach and landing, we are using instrument approach procedures. Each airliner is following the precision ILS approach procedure for their individual parallel runway. Well, unfortunately here at this airport in Centennial, there is only one GPS approach, I believe it is, RNAV GPS approach, to the 17 left, the large runway, the runway that the Metroliner was landing on, and the shorter parallel runway that the Cirrus was landing on was just doing that simply visually. Okay, let's go to our friend Victor at Vass Aviation for the ATC audio tapes and radar overlay of the pattern here. Cirrus 6 Delta Juliet traffic at your 1 to 2 o'clock a mile, about to turn base as a Skyhawk 6800. Okay, here is Cirrus 6 Delta Juliet entering on the right downwind for runway 17 right. Here is the Cessna. 83 Sierra Papa ahead of him on the right downwind for 17 right. Here's the Key Lime Metroliner going to be entering a right base entry for 17 left. Two parallel runways here at Centennial Airport. Let's take a look at that. Stand by. Here's the Centennial Airport KAPA. Runway 17 left, the long runway, over 10,000 feet long. This is the runway that the Metro Liner is landing on. And then one runway 17 right, 7,000 feet long. The shorter runway is the runway that the smaller single engine aircraft are using in a right hand pattern. Run, runway 17 left here has a RNAV GPS, I believe it is, instrument approach. 17 right has no instrument approach at all. They're just using visual procedures to line up with the runway 17 right. Uh, looking for traffic, 6 Delta Juliet. Sir, 6 Delta Juliet, fly towards the west shore of Cherry Creek. The west shore of Cherry Creek for 6 Delta Juliet. Okay, they're telling uh, Sir, 6 Delta Juliet, head for the west shore of this reservoir. Stand by, I'll show you that. Here's the Google Earth view of Centennial Airport. Zoom in here, there's runway 17 right and runway 17 left. Lots of development and growth around this airport. And here's the Cherry Creek State Park referenced in the news report. And here's the reservoir. And here's the west shore of that reservoir that they're aiming for as a visual checkpoint to come on in for their right base pattern and entry for 17 right. Tower, good morning. Can 970 on the visual on the left? Can 970 Centennial Tower, if you can, just maintain that speed. There'll be traffic in position prior to your arrival. I'll do it. Can Thank you. Okay, here's uh, Key Lime, the Metro liner right here. Sir, 6 Delta Juliet, traffic you're following, just turned right base. They're heading to the right, 6,600 Cessna. Uh, traffic in sight, 6 Delta Juliet. Sir, 6 Delta Juliet, follow them, Roman 17 right, cleared to land. Additional traffic, North Shore is the Metro liner for the parallel. Uh, traffic in sight, clear to land, 17 right, 6 Delta Juliet. Okay, so the controller pointed out to the Cirrus 6 Delta Juliet both of these aircraft, the Metroliner and the Cessna. So the Metroliner is on long straight in for the left runway, and the Cessna is on a shorter right base ahead of the Cirrus for the right runway. What's unclear at this time is did the Cirrus pilot understand to acknowledge that there are two pieces of traffic he's acknowledging that he's to be looking out for or does the Cirrus just see this Cessna in front of him and is acknowledging that it's not clear just from the ATC audio tapes here Q970 traffic one o'clock one mile six thousand five hundred Cessna on final for the parallel runway 
Roger, Kim. 970, we're looking. Okay, she's telling Key Lime about this traffic, the Cessna traffic ahead of him. And he does not have him visually in sight just yet. Key Lime 970, runway 17 left, clear to land, wind foam. Clear to land, 17 left, Key 970. There's a good clue about the winds and the pattern. The winds are calm at the airport. So oftentimes, some, well, investigators will be looking at the winds of this incident and overshooting winds are sometimes a factor. All pilots should be compensating for overshooting winds all the time. But if you have a wind that's pushing your right-hand traffic into the left lane, so to speak, that can be a factor. But winds are calm at the airport. Winds can be different up at the pattern altitude. So right about here is where the two aircraft end up coming together. And of course the Cirrus has on board the CAPS system, the parachute recovery system, and they use it and deploy that and land in the field off the end of the runway. Cirrus, 6 Delta Juliet, do not overshoot the final. Cirrus, 6 Delta Juliet, do you require assistance? So a little bit late in the game for the ATC controller. Again, this is a VFR operations, and so these sort of situations develop rather quickly in IFR operations and airline type operations. Everybody's watching much more closely these sorts of closures. Tower, QM 970, declare an emergency. We had, um, looks like the right engine failed, so I'm going to continue my landing here. Key line 970, we have crews come in, uh, continuing down runway 17 left, clear to land. Excellent job, Key line. Just continue to fly the aircraft. He has no idea what's happened to him. He's up there by himself. He can't see what's going on behind him there with the damage to his aircraft. He just suspects that a right engine has failed, and he's going to continue to fly the aircraft and do his emergency procedures for a right engine failure and go ahead and land straight ahead. The Cirrus ahead of him, by the way, is landing on the parallel runway off to his right. So Key Lime has the entire length of the long runway available to him. Sir, six Delta Julia, if you hear this transmission, we have emergency vehicles zero direction. In power, uh, there's another one. It's probably a two as that dropped the parachute um, fine over runway one seven. Thank you. Okay, this is apparently an, another aircraft in the pattern. I believe it's on the right downwind for the right runway. And according to another YouTube video, this is a student pilot on his first solo flight here at Centennial Airport witnessing all this mayhem. And uh, we'll check that video out here in a second. Cessna 251, do not overshoot final. There is a, an aircraft that is in distress just south of Cherry Creek Reservoir. Yeah, they just pulled two, two, five, one. Cessna 251, if you can give me an accurate location, we would appreciate it. They're about two miles. Good job, Cessna 251, especially if this is truly your first solo. You are pressed into service as a SAR CAP mission, <laughs> search and air rescue mission on your first solo to identify where the Cirrus is in, uh, in the field there. By those buildings right off uh, 35. Yeah, I see a parachute. Yeah, the uh, parachute is just south of the reservoir. It's uh, in, the, uh, in the airport uh, vicinity, just south of the reservoir, correct? Yeah, about a mile from the reservoir. Ten Tower, three sharp, Papa. There's a Hawk. We're right between the parallels. Attention, all aircraft. Use caution for a Hawk reported between the parallels. Tower, that was a definite midair on short final. This four bit box. Q-Lime 970, do you need any assistance? I'm going to taxi off here, and I think I'll just park over and signature. I'm good, though. Q-Lime 970, Roger, I appreciate that. Uh, and if you just stand by. <laughs> Key lime is uh, so cool. He's just like Chad on Saturday Night Live. I'm good. And because, again, I don't think he realizes the impact of what has just happened to him here until he gets that aircraft shut down and goes back and takes a look at it. That just must have been a heck of a surprise. Tower, I'm going to taxi on Alpha here back to this uh, northwest corner of the signature ramp. QM 970, Roger approved as requested, and we'll get a crew out to you also. Roger. 
Now look at the damage on that Metro liner. That is just tremendous damage. How that aircraft did not come apart after that much damage is just, just amazing. And the handling characteristics with that much drag on the aircraft. Good job, Keyline. Now looking at the Cirrus aircraft on the right here, it's hard to tell the extent of the damage on this, um, but the bat, the fuselage of the Cirrus is broken in two behind the cockpit. And I suspect that was done during the mid-air collision, not from the parachute landing fall. Now let's go take a look at this other YouTube video, and I think it's legitimate. Okay, technical difficulties. <laughs> Stand by. Thanks. We had to find another camera from uh, <laughs> Pete's friend down the street. Here's this other video showing the student pilot on his first solo. Let's back this up here a second. This comes from Shrav, 20 subscribers. He says, this all happened during my first solo at KAPA Centennial. I was flying November 6, 5251, which we heard on the audio tape from Vass Aviation and reported the pulled chute and location of the down Cirrus. Bonus pictures of the aircraft in my solo shirt. And that's what I think makes this video legitimate. I'll show you. He used a Google Earth overlay. Check this out. Hold short of Bravo 8 after taxi down Bravo. 332 needs runway in there. Hold short runway 17 left. Holding short of 17 left at Bravo 8. Here he is in Cessna 65251 on the right downwind for for the right run runway behind all of this other mayhem. Here comes the here comes the Cirrus and here comes the Key Lime. Thank you. Here's the Cherry Creek Reservoir they're talking about, West Shore Cherry Creek Reservoir, the VFR reporting point. Tower 733, think Charlie on this frequency. Cessna 3 single Charlie, ground point 0.8, thank you. Ground point 0.8, 733, Charlie. Sirius 6 Delta Juliet, do not overshoot the final. Sirius 6 Delta Juliet, do you require assistance? So right about there is where the Cirrus ended up with the ballistic parachute, and that jives with the video of the parachute landing of the Cirrus. Cirrus 6 Delta Juliet, if you hear this transmission, we have emergency vehicles zero direction. Cessna 251, do not overshoot final. There is a, an aircraft that is in distress just south of Cherry Creek Reservoir. Yeah, they just pulled two 251. Cessna 251, if you can give me an accurate location, we would appreciate it. They're about two miles. By those buildings right off uh, 35. Yeah, I see a parachute. Yeah, the uh, parachute is just south of the reservoir. It's uh, in the, uh, in the airport uh, vicinity just south of the reservoir, correct? Yeah, about a mile from the reservoir. Good job, Cessna 251. First solo trip, at, and you're pressed into service as a SARCAP rescue, finding where the Cirrus actually landed. Now, here's a good view of the parallel runways at Centennial Airport. Here's 17 left, the long runway, and here's 17 right, the short runway. The short runway is the right-hand pattern that the small aircraft are using, and the long runway is the one for the Metro liner. Now, in the investigators will be interviewing the pilot of the Cirrus aircraft, and they'll be asking him not only about that traffic and traffic acknowledgement call we talked about earlier, but they'll also be asking him, which runway were you lined up? on is it possible that you saw 17 left and took that to be runway 17 right and were you fully expecting to land on 17 left or lining up to land on 17 left expecting it to be runway 17 right again this is just visual procedures there's no instrument procedures to help back you up like we use in the airlines 6432 can confirm the parachute was directly in front of runway 35. Thank you. 6432 holding short of 17 at Bravo 8. Thank you. Attack air. Here's a video of the uh, parachute landing of the Cirrus ballistic parachute. It deploys such that the aircraft lands uh, flat. And you can't see it from this picture here, but the Cirrus... The Cirrus fuselage is broken 
behind the cockpit. And I don't think that was from the parachute landing fall. I suspect that that may have been from the midair collision. Not real clear on that. And then the incredible amount of damage to the Metro liner. Very lucky to bring that aircraft back and not having it sliced in two. And this is where I think this is a legitimate video. Look at this. First solo flight, Shravan Patel. That's Shravan right there. There's his instructor, Aspen Flying Club. He's got the date correct, 5-12-21. There's his end number, 65281. And look what his instructor gave him on his T-shirt. This is an ancient tradition in aviation where you cut the cut the uh, cut your shirt tails uh, when you're free from your first solo. They take your T-shirt and cut it out and and uh, show the date and the time and the aircraft that you soloed on. <laughs> and look at this this additional illustration. This instructor added traffic to follow the Cirrus in the parachute for one seven right six five two five one. Good Wait. job, Patel. So I hope this gives you a better understanding with what happened with the midair collision at Centennial Airport in Colorado today. Thanks so much for your support of this channel and for all of you over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. That's Harrison Electro Polishing. Not electro plating, but electro polishing. Thanks guys. Thank you.